Hey everyone, it's Rob B here with Rob D, and you are listening to the Property Podcast. Last week, the Bank of England made a big announcement on interest rates, and interest rates are a big deal when it comes to mortgages. So, rightly so, we have a mortgage expert on the show this week to help us navigate what does this mean right now, what does the future hold, and what should you be doing if you need to take a mortgage out in the near future. Welcome to the Property Podcast. Thank you for joining us. This is the show where we love to share our knowledge every week that we've gained from being involved in property day in, day out for well over a decade. But sometimes we need a bit of support. So we are bringing in a special guest this week to bring you the very latest on what is happening in the world of mortgages. So if you're thinking about a refinance, if you've got a deal going through, or you just want to keep up with how the mortgage market is going to affect your plans, you'll want to stick around. And you'll also want to stick around to the end where Rob is sharing something that he's done to make it more likely that he hits his goals. It's time for our news story of the week. And this week's news comes from the Zoopla UK Rental Market Report for March. And there's some really interesting data here. First of all, UK rent inflation has slowed down to a two-year low of 7.8%. So still very high, but way down on where it has been. Now, obviously, this is an average. And then when you look at regionally what's happening, it gets even more interesting because Scotland, the area with rent controls, still sees double-digit rental inflation of 11.6%. And that's with rental controls. And on the other end of the scale, London is seeing the sharpest slowdown with inflation just down to 5.1% now. And that's from 15.3% a year ago. So a significant slowdown in the London rental market. And while the slowdown is expected to continue and rents are calming down and probably needed to, you can still see why they are going up and they're not going into reverse even after this big surge that we've had over the last few years. And that's because it's a supply and demand issue. And in this report, Supla have reported that letting agents have 28% less stock than they had pre-pandemic. And that's a significant number. So rental inflation looks like it's here to stay, albeit at a slower rate. This is the type of stuff that we love to get into in our monthly market updates. So make sure you have that episode bookmarked and you listen to it as soon as it comes out because we'll bring you more info like this in that episode. But before we jump into our main topic of the week, just a heads up, we have roles available at Property Hub at the moment. Would you like to work with our incredible investors at Property Hub Invest? If the answer is yes, then go to propertyhub.net forward slash jobs. That's propertyhub.net forward slash jobs, where you can see what roles we have available at the moment, including portfolio managers, our advisors to our investors. They are a great, great team, and we are looking to build on it. So do check that link out if you'd like to work with Rob and I and the rest of the Property Hub team. It's propertyhub.net forward slash jobs jobs. Mortgages have always been super important for property investors, one of the most valuable tools at your disposal. But it always used to be the case that as long as you knew how mortgages worked, not that much changed from month to month. Now that is no longer the case. So much volatility, products being released and pulled, prices changed, so much so that we have started having these regular mortgage market updates on the Property Podcast. And even though the Bank of England has just held the base rate steady, as expected, that doesn't mean things are calm in the world of mortgages. Well, we're very lucky to have an expert on hand to help us through all this. We have friend of the podcast, Nick Shepard, joining us today. Nick's been on the podcast a few times. He's a bit of a podcast veteran now. And more importantly, he's a veteran of the mortgage world. He's been in the industry for decades. Hope you don't mind me saying that, Nick. But Nick is very experienced. So thank you for joining us today, Nick. So to kick things off, before we talk about the Bank of England announcement, can you bring us up to speed with what's been happening with the mortgage market over the last few months? We've seen signs that we're progressing into a better market. It's a little early to see the impacts of the recent base rate and inflation news, but I am looking forward to seeing some more rate reductions over the coming months. The infamous product fees are still something to navigate, but I do like the options that we all have. Zero arrangement fee products will naturally hover in and around the base rate with a little lender margin. So at the moment, rates are starting from 5.44 for a five-year limited company fix with no fees. If you're happy to preserve your cash flow, rates can start from 4.6%, which is great. 
it's important to remember that the mortgage headlines we see are often related to residential homeowner mortgages rather than buy to let because residential mortgages are provided by banks and have very, very different funding lines to limited company buy to let lenders. Yeah, certainly hasn't been quiet. And what about the Bank of England's recent base rate announcement? What kind of impact might that have? So we've seen the rate held for a fifth consecutive time. So we're making good strides towards the cuts. One member of the NIME supported a reduction to 5%, so that's a very good sign. Let's just hope the positivity spreads to the other members. The main concern seemed to be a, a clearer picture in regards to oil prices. Inflation is expected to drop below target in April, and so we are expected to see a base rate reduction in June. So let's keep our fingers crossed for that. So the impact essentially is more stability with further uh, rate reductions, hopefully in June. Now, understandably, there seems to be a lot of borrowers, both owner-occupiers and investors, keeping a close eye on interest rates and waiting to make their move. Is now the time to lock in with a fixed product? Or is it worth waiting a little longer and seeing where rates go? Yes, rates are competitive and it is a good time to lock in, but it is important to keep close with your broker to learn if any better rates are being released with your lender of choice. Each of those scenarios are very different, so it's important to understand the consequences of not being proactive Waiting for a rate that may not come has its risks. And if mortgage rates are improving for borrowers, does that mean that the fees that lenders are charging are improving too? Because that's a real bugbear of investors at the moment. Because over the last couple of years, they've become really high. Yes, the infamous arrangement fees are still here. They are reducing, but I don't feel they will disappear overnight. There are some great products out there, even with no fees. So again, it's important to get clarity to what products are out there to suit your goals. So rates are getting better and product fees are, but I don't think rates are going to dramatically change overnight. So as the mortgage market finds its new normal, what kind of rates and fees should investors be searching out? They're quite conservative. So for limited company investments, I would run my numbers at 5.5% and use a stress test of 125%. I think that's fair and reasonable and catches the middle ground. So just simply 5.5%. And to follow on from that, what kind of rates should people be stress testing at? For, well, there's different stress tests for different entities of purchase. So with limited company, for a five-year fix, you're stressing at pay rates. So your projected interest rate times up by 125%. It's so always remember, important to remember two-year fixes have tougher stress tests. So that's when the 145% calculation comes across. But just to keep things simple, use your pay rate times by 125%. So I guess you'd agree it'd be a good time to look at where your rents are in relation to the current market. We've heard a lot of stories from investors that they're unable to refinance due to the rental stress tests being an issue. Pre-product fees, some clients struggle to refinance investments on legacy rental income. This is one of the reasons product fees came about, to take the weight off the interest rate to allow clients to pass the rental stress tests. I welcome their flexibility as it saved tenants from rent increases in a sensitive time and also helped investors secure a mortgage. Thankfully, it's not so much of an issue anymore as lenders are wise to the issue and offer various product solutions to help clients remortgage. What about loan to value ratios? Should we be expecting to put in higher deposits or leave more equity in a deal? How much of a difference can that make? It's going to be expected, but the flexibility of a larger deposit and equity will help your cash flow and serve as a plan B should you see a down valuation. It all comes back down to whether you're confident with your investment. Are you happy working with a lower LTV if you have confidence in a long-term appreciation? If you're on a two-year fix at the moment and you're looking to remortgage, I'll potentially look to product transfer on another two-year fix to keep costs down, keep the cost of remortgaging down to preserve your equity and potentially refinance in, in two years' time. There are various different solutions to that problem, essentially. Uh, remortgaging can get expensive, especially when you're moving from lender to lender and trying to appreciate equity. So doing it at the right time is extremely important. There are slightly reduced rates for lower LTVs. So it does help to be equity heavy at the moment, but it depends what type of product you're coming off. Great. So what about getting new mortgages, both on new purchases and refinancing through the pipeline? Are lenders wanting to lend? Are they making life easy? I haven't seen any concerns or issues that worry me. Uh, focusing on buy to let, lenders want to lend. In the most part, it's the only arm of their business, so they have to. I do feel buy to let investing is becoming more professional, so better quality properties with fewer issues will naturally lead to lean mortgage underwriting and valuations. But there's nothing of note that's concerning me at the moment. And what about valuations? 
Because there seems to be improving sentiment in the market in general. Everyone's feeling a bit better. Has that made it as far as surveyors? Valuations are improving, but we can only really qualify 2024 once we have an actual bank of data. This year will be very different to last. We are moving forward and with economic confidence improving, I'm sure values will too. Going back to the earlier point, having a little plan B fund will help. There isn't anything wrong with being a little equity heavy in the current climate. So for investors out there right now, about to pull the trigger on a mortgage, what steps should they be taking to get the best possible results? Regarding mortgaging, proactivity and relationship building are key. When receiving advice, it's vital that the advisor has time to provide context and transparency to the market. Advisors shouldn't place orders. If they do, clients may be missing a golden opportunity with the products they weren't aware of. Markets like this will provide a solution that clients need visibility for. And to wrap up, we can't let you go without asking you, what do you think the next six to 12 months will look like for the mortgage market? And don't worry, we're not going to play this back in a year's time to see if you were right. But just give us your impressions of how you're feeling right now. I'm optimistic yet pragmatic with the economic outlook. Uh, rates are getting better, but we shouldn't be expecting sharp reductions. I think a five-year fix with a 4.5% interest rate and a 3% product fee is a good sign of recovery. The one positive I'm taking from this climate is that thankfully investing is becoming more professional. Investors have more awareness of rate sensitivities and most importantly are performing DD into the assets in, in question. The low rate environment was guilty of helping people sleepwalk through investments and hiding poor investment choices. A huge thank you again to Nick for joining us. Rob, it seems that Nick is cautiously optimistic, I think is probably the fair way of putting it. And that's good news. The mortgage market has been tricky over the last 12 months. I think tricky is underplaying it slightly. And I'm sure Nick and the other brokers we work with have been extremely busy because of that. And they'll probably appreciate that things are starting to improve. I think everyone will appreciate that. But for me, whenever we speak to someone like Nick, it reminds me of the importance of working with not just a broker, I'm sure everyone's working with a mortgage broker, but someone who is can do about the whole thing. Because we have had really tricky times and there will have been mortgage applications, refinance applications, where it's not what you'd ideally want. And there's some really tricky decisions that investors will have had to make over the last year. But every time we've had a broker on the show, they've been very much like, okay, right, this is it. This is a reality. How do we deal with it? And there's always a way. So working with someone who has that mindset just makes such a difference. So once again, a huge thank you to Nick and a huge thank you to you, dear listener, at least those who've shook our hand over the last few weeks. Yes, before we get to Hub Extra, and it's a good one, I want to shake your hand. I want to do a handshake deal with you because Rob and I have done this podcast week in, week out, without missing a week for over 10 years. And we're not looking for medals. We're not looking for pats on the back. We're looking for support. We want you to help get the word of the podcast out. And hopefully by now, you feel that we've deserved that. So our handshake deal is me reaching out to you say, let's shake on it. We'll carry on podcasting. We'll carry on delivering all the value we possibly can. But in return, share the podcast. Give it to a few people. Go to propertyhub.net forward slash podcast and share that link with people and get them on board and help them out as well. Because the more people that listen to the podcast, the more people we can help. And if you're feeling extra generous, go and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Search for Property Hub UK and hit subscribe. That helps us out. We're growing that channel as well. It's going great guns. We've got tens of thousands of subscribers there already. We've only been treating it serious for the last couple of years. So that's great that that's growing and going great guns. So share the podcast, subscribe on YouTube, and virtually let's shake hands. Okay, let's reward you for doing that by packing in a little bit extra in the form of Hub Extra, the bit of the show where we aim to enrich your life with a recommendation of some form. And Rob, you brought one this week, which is a little bit of a follow-on from something you've discussed before. It is, but I feel it's going to help people out. So previously on Hub Extra, I've talked about how you should be taking advantage of widgets on your phone. So you hold your screen down on an iPhone anyway, and then you can have widgets appear that are related to your app. So you could have your calendar appear. You could have the weather. You can have so many different things, and you can do this on Android as well. And hopefully many of you have taken advantage of that feature and implemented it on your phone. But I've refreshed mine recently because I have different goals and I have different things I'm trying to achieve. So I've rejigged my widgets to help me focus on goals. So at the moment, I'm working on some health and fitness goals. So my widgets on my home screen are 
for health and fitness. And that means every time I open my phone up, which unfortunately is probably far more than I should, the first thing I see at least is a positive reinforcement to focus on the thing I'm working on right now. So if you have a finance goal, a fitness goal, whatever it may be, put widgets on the home screen to help you focus on that. I'm sure it will make a difference. I'm already finding it a huge help. I really like that. I think just shaking up your environment with your physical or your digital environment can be helpful in itself just because it shakes your brain out of doing everything on autopilot. And if you can combine that with making changes that reinforce goals that you've got, I can see how that's really powerful. So that is us done for this week, another property podcast in the books. But if you think, oh no, now I've got to wait till next Tuesday for more property goodness, well, you would be incorrect because tomorrow our monthly behind the scenes episode, any other business will be dropping into your feed. So do make sure you get that one queued up in your podcast feed. So until then, thank you for listening. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.